there's, you know, from early spring till fall, there's not a morning that I'm not out there in the dark before sunrise with my coffee. And a lot of times at night, we go out there and we sit and the birds are going all the time and the eagles fly by. And sometimes I'll see an eagle fishing or the other day I saw an eagle grab a seagull. And you know, the, the fact that we're on the flyway, this is magnificent. And you never, it never gets old, never. Herons, herons are interesting birds. They can tolerate a lot of uh, disturbance. I mean, you'll see people have been camping on this island. You'll see that I, when I go out and sit and watch the world go by, I'm right there on the Mississippi, so I can, every day something's happening. If the weather's good, people come out of their homes like ants come out of their anthills and head for that bridge and head for that river. People want to see and be a part of this wonderful river system. It's interesting, the Mississippi starts in northern Minnesota, wends its way through 11 states, I believe, draining 40% of the country, 2,500 plus miles. And while there have been a number of Civil War battlefields along the river designated, this remains the only national river segment of the 2,500 mile Mississippi. This piece of the river is especially unique on the Mississippi River. The river changes here more than anywhere else, I think, on its entire course. We start with a prairie river that comes into the northern part of the metro area. There's really no big floodplain, no tall bluffs. It's a fairly narrow river. At St. Anthony Falls, the only major waterfall on the Mississippi, it drops into an eight and a half mile gorge or canyon where the bluffs are only about a quarter of a mile apart to a third of a mile and up to 80 feet tall. And then at the mouth of the Minnesota River, about halfway through our corridor, it opens up into the wide Mississippi River floodplain. That uh, river of Mark Twain and image, myth, and metaphor that most people think of when they think of the Mississippi. The nearest to national park would be in northern, well, I assume northern Minnesota. National park, I mean, boundary water. Yeah. But that's a couple hours away. From where I'm standing, I would say the nearest national park is probably under my feet. And I know this because I've walked this stretch many times and I've read the plaques and I've been to the Sparks Art Festival here. It took creative people to think that you could make a national park out of a, or a part of the river as big as the Mississippi River. And I think it's, it tells you something about um, how special resources get protected. They get protected by people that can see their value to future generations. Back then, most people just couldn't see a national park when they looked at this section of the Mississippi River. The river was just beginning to recover from more than a century of abuse and neglect. But there were a few visionaries people like Shirley Hunt, Peter Gove, and Tom Kelly, who understood the significance of the river and its potential for improving our quality of life. Grandpa, we found your face! Make sure it's prevention for their children Senator next Senator Dave Durfiger! Really? Right there! Support of local Holy cow! How did you get there? Their vision made sense to Congressman Bruce Vento and Senator Dave Durenberger, who co-authored the legislation establishing the Mississippi National River and Recreation Area in 1988. As we have a picture in the hallway here of Tom and Bruce going through the lock and dam, and the way Bruce signed the picture was to Tom, the godfather of Minra. And I think that speaks well to Tom's being identified as being the moving force as Minnesotans, we are blessed to have in our state the only national park unit dedicated solely to the Mississippi River. Next year's 100th anniversary celebration of the National Park Service offers us a chance to celebrate the wonders of this magnificent yet little known park in our midst. The Mississippi National River and Recreation Area is 72 miles long and resides in the heart of a major metropolitan area. 
It contains countless historic, recreational, scenic, cultural, and natural resource features. This section of the river was saved by the environmental movement of the 1970s and by the creation of this park. This documentary will tell the story of how a vital stretch of this great river was resurrected and reborn as a national park. You asked earlier what I worry about. Is worry, I worry about people going back to sleep. People got to be engaged. They got to meet. They got to go to the meetings. We have to hear from them. Uh, they have. They have to make a difference. For example, the Friends of Mississippi uh, organization has made a big difference around here. I hear from them all the time uh, at the meetings. They're there, uh, making their point. They know what they're talking about. And not only that, because they live this river, uh, they really it, it sense the depth and the understanding.